Hello, beautiful people. Thank you for blessing me with your time today. I hope you're in a happy mind state wherever you are in life. And you know, in this video, I want to talk to you guys about ways that you can make money with marijuana. You know, it's not hard to look around and see the cost of everything is just skyrocketing. Yet, your paycheck, it seems like it's just taking a nosedive. It's hard to keep up. I mean, there comes times where I will go to the grocery store and I have to make a decision. Do I, am I going to buy food or am I going to pay my rent? And it's kind of like that's the way it's pointed to in today's time. So with that being said, uh, here are a few ideas that you can make some extra income. Now these ideas are not going to make you rich. They're not going to make you wealthy overnight. Uh, you do have to put a little bit of money, you know, to get started. But again, who doesn't like pass? Who doesn't like extra income? And it's passive income on top of that. So let's get started. Number one, uh, before we do get started, I'm not a financial advisor. I know nothing about financing, uh, finances. Uh, I probably would need to come to you for financial advice. But with that being said, number one, weed stocks. Did you know? Right now, in on the stock exchange, there are companies that you can that traded publicly that you can invest in that deals with mainly marijuana. Different sectors. I mean, there's there's companies that deals with on the pharmaceutical. I mean, on the pharmaceutical side of things, there's there's companies that deals with like maybe consumer, um, you know, things that you would consume. Uh, there's companies that deal with the grow operation. There's companies that deals with maybe the property uh, of, of putting up, uh, you know, marijuana related businesses. So there's companies that you can invest in right now that deals with mainly uh, with weed, you know, different sectors of weed different aspects of weed but it deals with mainly weed now you know you can just go online and, and look it up and type in weed stocks and you'll see a whole list and you know whatever one that you would suit your boat you know um but yeah and i was kind of looking uh when i was doing research and i did notice that a lot of the weed uh, stocks are very low right now. Now that's not to say that should you buy them i mean again you want to do your own report your own research you know, um, I'm not advocating going and buying weed stocks whatsoever. I'm not sponsored or paid by any company to advertise or, you know, advocate for their, you know, for their company. But again, um, weed stocks, you know, again, weed stocks are down and, you know, great way to generate money. Um, now you're not going to, again, you're not going to get rich, you know, investing, but again, it, it will can generate extra income. So with that being said, number two, sell things, sell things that's weed related. You know, if you, if you, especially a person, you know, you want to kind of start, start your own business, you know, uh, you don't have an idea, sell things that's in the weed niche. You know, uh, when I was younger, there used to be this magazine and I don't know if they're still in publication now, but there used to be this magazine called High Times. And high times, if you ever, you know, it used to be one of those little like taboo type magazines back in the day. And it used to be, if you want to get it, you have to, you know, kind of go to the section that sold the girly magazines. You know, the penthouse and the playboys and uh, whatever. Not saying that I know about that kind of stuff. But, you know, it would be kind of be in that section. But what high times mainly was, it was just talk about weed. You know, they would show pictures. They would do reporting on weed. But, you know, they, they didn't sell weed itself. But... They talked about weed and that's how they made money and just talking about weed and the same thing here you can you know start things like an online store you know uh, maybe you can get a partnership with Amazon or you know you can maybe get a have a company like uh, Squarespace or Wix where you can start a uh, start a website and just kind of sell things that's weed related, you know, bongs and, you know, maybe you have t-shirts or coffee mugs or, you know, things that kind of maybe captures or purchases person's attention. Because if, if you kind of look around on social media, just in society in general, weed has become more popular, more popular. It's become more acceptable in, in society today. Um, there. So yeah, having an online store, great way to, to generate extra income. So uh, with that being said, the next idea I thought was kind of 
you know, I didn't know there was a kind of a big market, but apparently there is. And that's to be a product tester. Product tester. You know, there's a lot of companies right now that, you know, they want to kind of get their brand and their product out there. Um, you know, so they're looking for people to test their products. Now, you may not get money from it. You may not be compensated, but you do get like free, you know, I mean, you know, I was kind of looking it up and you get free samples, you know, so maybe there's some new strain of gummies that's coming out. So, you know, they, they want somebody to test it to make sure that it, it, it tastes good and it's something that the public would purchase, you know, um, maybe new strain of weed or, you know, um, just all kind of different things, you know, maybe there's drops and stuff. You can just go online and Google product testing for marijuana. And again, a whole list of companies will come up and you just click on and just kind of fit their criteria. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're all the same. You may have to register or put your personal information in there, like your email address or something. But again, being a product tester uh, there. So, you know, again, you might not get compensated, but, you know, uh, you, you might get free samples. So anything you know free is always the best thing and you know <laughs> to me uh, there so let's move on uh, becoming a consultant becoming a consultant now that sounds kind of fancy but let me tell you uh, being a consultant just means that you're you know giving your knowledge putting your knowledge out there you know um, I'd be amazed at how many a lot of people will pay for information Will pay for information a lot of people pay for information and you may think well i don't have nothing to offer a person you know i'm not knowledgeable or anything and you'd be surprised you'd be surprised the simplest things that you may find or the things that you might find simple other people may pay a lot to learn about that and if you don't really know much um you know if you don't really know much uh you can go on things like youtube and and there's a whole a lot of videos one of the great things about YouTube is that you can go on there and watch a lot of video that has they offer it's free it's free content that will show you a lot of the how-to videos so for example if maybe you don't you know maybe you want to kind of go into that being a consultant you can learn how to grow weed and then you know pay other people to teach them how to grow weed I know it sounds really silly maybe it sounds simple but you'd be amazed at how profitable that is you know maybe you can uh, learn how to grow different strains of weed or add flavor to weed and you know in pharmaceutical companies that grows that or grow ops or uh, farms that grows that type of product uh, maybe we'll pay you to show them how to incorporate that into their product you know so again becoming a consultant um, again great idea all it just takes is your time. You don't really have to put much money up on that. I mean, yeah, you might have to pay for internet and the device you're watching it on, but just taking time, just taking time, learning it, and you know, even something as extracting THC from the weed. Here, here's something I found very interesting when I was doing research here, and that was there is a huge market for people who have pets. You know, in the CBD oil, the CBD, is that, am I saying that right? CBD oil, there is a huge pet market for people who will purchase that and give it to their pets. So I imagine, you know, if you could um, sell something like that or, you know, um, teaching people how to, you know, make something like that be very profitable. So, yeah, just becoming a consultant. You know, again, not much money, uh, just all it requires is just your time. So let's move on. And that kind of leads me into the next idea of making money, and that is edibles. Edibles. You know, um, I don't really like edibles. And the reason why I don't like edibles is because all of them have this funny, weird, and maybe it's just me. Maybe it's what I'm buying, uh, but they all have this weird, funny, like, cardboard taste to it and it just kind of tastes weird tastes funny it just doesn't taste good to me you know and then if you eat a lot of it i don't care what it is like if it's nachos or weed infused uh uh hamburgers or or uh, chocolate or brownies or whatever it, it it makes you feel it makes you nauseous makes you sick you know so if you could invent something that wouldn't make a person sick, that wouldn't, you know, you couldn't really taste it like it had weed in it. I think there would be a huge market for that. And, you know, again, back to the pet thing, which I thought was really interesting, is that 
if you can develop a product that you know where the pet will like it it doesn't make the the pet sick I think again there would be it would be a huge market for that um, prime example I love coffee I love drinking coffee and if it, I would think that would be the greatest product ever a gift is if I could come across some weed infused coffee where I didn't have to add drops to it or anything like that I can just you know brew it in my coffee pot and pour it in my cup and, and enjoy the flavor I love coffee and so if I could find you know if you were the type of person that maybe develop weed infused coffee I would probably be your biggest customer you know so if you could develop something great tasting edibles that's not gonna make you sick but give you that you know give you that high or whatever and um, you know does taste terrible you know hey there's a huge market for that so yeah great way to make money again if you're just now watching it coming in watching the video again these are all ideas that you can make money with marijuana passively you know passive income and if you don't know what passively you mean that means you can make money no matter what you're doing you're on vacation you're you know taking a bath you're it's you're sleeping you're gonna still be generating money you know and that's the greatest thing um, of all is generating money and you didn't even have to you know you don't even have to be there physically and you're gonna make money you know so with that being said um, starting a social media uh, starting a brand starting a brand I mentioned earlier about Hot Times magazine you know they started a brand because you know they're we you know they probably opened a lot of people's minds or um, you know perception of weed they probably changed a lot of people's perception of weed you know made it you know probably I would have to say hot times you know things like hot times and movies like Ching Ching Chong and you know maybe Snoop Dogg or whatever you know has made I think you know people become more acceptable weed you know society more acceptable weed you know and so if you could be one of those persons that start a brand stand out you know um, you're starting brand you know just doing a blog you know maybe you're not for weed maybe you're against weed so you can you know start a blog on why you hate weed or not hate, but why you don't like weed what you know maybe you know maybe you're a big advocate for marijuana you know you could start a blog on you know why why it's consuming marijuana is good you know um, have a funny saying you know uh, you know again hot times you know if you could brand that something like that you know I mean that name is already taken but again starting a brand starting um, you know having a voice on social media start a blog you know about maybe your experiences of, of being marijuana you know um, you know when, how you feel with marijuana how do marijuana make you feel just, just some small ideas you know again and I didn't know this either but if you can have enough people to follow you companies will take notice and they will start paying you to advertise their product in your videos, in your blogs, or whatever. You know, maybe you can start a podcast and, you know, companies will pay you to advertise on your, you know, podcast if you have, you know, X number of followers, you know, X number of people. If you have an audience, you know, say if you have a huge audience, companies will start paying you, you know, they'll start sending you things and or whatever and, you know, they'll start paying you and stuff. So, yeah, just kind of start your brand. So, uh, next idea, and, and again, I thought this was just like the weirdest idea, but I got to thinking about it, and yeah, it makes sense. And that is to start a food truck. You know, uh, start a food truck. Now, I did look at the price of what it would cost to start a food truck, to purchase a food truck, and the cheapest price that I've seen for a food truck was like $80,000. That's very expensive. That was just for the generator or whatever. You, know, you still have to go in and, and build your own, but that was just the bare basic entry level food truck um, you know but I've seen you know they run you know hundred thousand dollars up to some of them a, a million dollars you know and that's like what it would cost to buy a McDonald's you know a million dollars if you wanted to buy you know start a franchise you know buy into that franchise you know McDonald's <laughs> you know you could buy a Chick-fil-A for ten thousand dollars you know um, and I just thought that was really interesting, you know, the food truck costs that much. I mean, and, and, you know, and, and, but the idea is, is that, you know, uh, if you could sell like weed infused food. Um, so here's an idea. Maybe you don't have enough money, well, not enough, but maybe you don't, you don't have money, that much money to buy a food truck. You know, I used to, I see all the time, like in the summertime, there's people who have these bicycles, right? 
and uh, on the bicycle there's like this I don't know if it's a, like an ice chest or an ice box or whatever and they would have popsicles in there you know and they would sell popsicles ride around on their bicycle or they would move in and set up shop with their bicycle with an umbrella and you know and they have uh, popsicles or they sell hot dogs or pickles or whatever uh, nachos or whatever and on the bicycle you know and you can do the same thing you can have uh, maybe you don't want to get a bicycle but you can get a cart or something, a little box and something, and, and isolate, insulate it. I'm sorry, insulate it and sell weed infused ice cream, weed infused uh, cold drinks, and you know, on a hot sunny day, at with these vendors, you know, like the festivals and you know, summer fest and jazz fest, you, know, you can sell these weed infused popsicles, you know, a dollar a pop or two dollars, or weed infused drinks and stuff, you know, um, you know, weed infused water. You know, I think would be something like that. So, you know, selling, you know, something like uh, like having a food truck or having a food container that you can sell out of. Now, you may have to kind of, I imagine, get like a, a license. Uh, you probably have to pay some kind of, get some kind of permit or something of that, you know, to, uh, so you would have to look that up in your city, how that would operate. But yeah, uh, or even just getting an ice chest, you know, and just, you know, something you can carry around and have you, you know, package up some cold, uh, you know, like I said, weed infused water and $2 a bottle, whatever. And, and on a hot sunny day, you know, I think you would probably sell out really, really quick. So, yeah. There. Next idea is that uh, it's, it's to host a weed event. Host a weed event. And now, I know that probably sounds really expensive, but you can rent a building because nobody is renting anything anymore. Everybody's working remotely. So, a lot of buildings you can probably find at a discount because no one's using those buildings. You know, everybody's working remotely. And, you know, um, so there's a lot of buildings if you drive around your city and you probably haven't noticed. But if you look around your city, you'll see a lot of buildings that are for lease. And you could probably rent a building or a venue of some kind, maybe a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars, and you can have like weed events. You know, in the city that I live in, you know, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish there were more events, more things that you can do in public without being frowned upon. That um, you can just consume marijuana and be at peace. You know, um, you know they have. Uh, one thing that comes to mind is like if you could have something like maybe have like a chili cook-off, weed infused chili cook-off and you know the best tasting chili uh, you know gets 50 bucks or you know you have a, maybe a draw and weed and draw weed and paint type of thing and you know the best picture gets $20 or something like that you know uh, you could have something like that and you know and then charge $5 a head, $10 a head you know I mean or, or if you, <laughs> they have it where, you know, if you have maybe get a, a get you a building or something and, and put you a few TVs in there, a few video game consoles, a loudspeaker, and, and play some music and person can charge, you know, you charge a person $10 to come in there and, and smoke weed and play video games and listen to music and just chill, you know, and vibe with other people and kind of make it like a, like a hookah lounge. You know, the hookah lounge, I think it's one of the best ideas of all because you can go there and, I, you know, I've never had hookah before. I don't even know what a hookah, I don't know if that's, what is that, tobacco or something. But you can go and smoke hookah and you have drinks and, you know, you just vibe with other people and enjoy other people's company. So, having a, doing a weed event, you know, and again, I imagine the most expensive thing on that is probably finding a building and renting it out and maybe getting the event out there. But, you know, I think... Fifteen, twenty-five hundred dollars, you know, and and you know that would be enough to cover everything. I would think. I don't know, but again, you would have to look that kind of thing up and and see again. Um, you know, if you need a permit, if you, if you need to get some type of uh, special thing for your city ordinance type of thing. So you definitely want to look that up in your city. But I think that's a really, really great idea uh, there for for a weed event. So uh, next idea is to get a, actually. It sounds really simple, I guess. Uh, it's to real is to get a job in the weed industry. Get a job in the weed industry in the city I live in. There, I'm always seeing on Craigslist, on Indeed, on uh, uh, Glassdoor, uh, people companies that are hiring dispensaries. 
that are hiring for like bud tenders uh, to make the weed look all pretty. Uh, there, there's like grow operations here that's, that want people to come in and help cultivate the weed. You know, um, you know if, if you're kind of like going into school, you know, when I was going to school, uh, they were starting to offer classes at, at some of the big universities here. Uh, things like, you know, uh, degrees in marijuana. You know, degrees like in horticulture or cultivation or, you know, on the pharmaceutical side of things, you know, um, you know, in culinary and stuff like that for, for marijuana and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I don't know <laughs> how profitable those degrees are, but the idea is, is that, you know, uh, just getting a job, you know, nowadays, you know, people may frown upon weed, but there's a lot of people who are becoming very, very uh, wealthy in the marijuana industry so you know getting weed and, and those jobs are probably hard to get access to you know um, I mean you know I imagine that they go pretty fast you know because you know I imagine a lot of people would love to work in the marijuana industry so yeah so this is the last one I know I've been babbling on I've been talking long enough so this is the last one here and that's the start of delivery service um, I know it sounds very expensive but you know you can pay you can go to uh, a website called Fiverr. I think it's F V E E uh, F V E R R or something. I don't know. Uh, something like that. You can go to a website. There's this website. There's this uh, website called Fiverr. You can go on there and hire a person to develop something like an app. You can have them to pay them to develop an app for you and um, and and have them develop like Uber. You know, like Uber Eats. You know, on Uber. If you're not familiar with Uber, Uber. Uh, you go on Uber and there's all these different like restaurants and stuff like that and if you want something at 3 o'clock in the morning maybe you want a Big Mac at 3 o'clock in the morning you go to McDonald's and place your order and Uber picks it up and brings it to you and this is the same idea you know somebody goes they, they place an order uh, with Joe Blow's dispensary and it, you know you get the order you go pick it up and deliver it to them you know maybe that's too fancy maybe that's too complicated too technical or whatever uh, so you know, you can partner with the dispensary. So whenever they get an order, because there's a lot of people, myself included, you know, I don't have a car. You know, there's a lot of people who don't have cars or maybe they're, they're stuck, you know, stuck at home due to illness. Maybe they can't get out. Maybe they lost their driving privilege so they can't get out and drive. And, and you know, they've lost their, you know, they don't, you know, just can't drive or whatever. Don't have a car. Or, you know, cars are expensive, you know, right now. But, you know, don't have a car. So, you know, if I wanted to go to the, you know, get some weed or whatever, I would have to pay Uber or pay a person or, you know, um, catch the city bus or walk to the dispensary. Anyway, it's just, you know, it's, it's a lot of times it's inconvenient. <laughs> but yeah, so if you know, you know, maybe you have a card and, you know, five or six people who don't have a card, maybe they want some weed. So you can charge them, you know, five dollars. I'll go pick you up something, you know, for five dollars. You know, you got five, six people. That's 30 bucks, 25, 30 bucks, 30 bucks. You know, you do that three times a week. That's 90 dollars a week. Just go and go pick up weed and bringing it to the people. You know, again, I don't know if that's that's legal. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. But yeah, starting a delivery service like with uh, Uber Eats, you know, really great way of generating extra income. Again, all of these ideas, you probably won't get rich from any of them. You can, you know, can you quit your nine to five? Uh, I wouldn't. But again, it's it's to just uh, help, you know, with, you know, uh, with your main source of income. Because again, price of everything is just is skyrocketing out of here. So with that being said, I'm going to end this video. Again, thank you for blessing me with your time today. I hope you, you know, I hope that, you know, life is good for you wherever you are in life. You know, hey, if it was in person, I would definitely would love to smoke with you. Maybe we could drink, have a cup of coffee. And um, until then, take care. Uh, and, you know, just enjoy the rest of your day.